the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The litany of the most holy name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on us. Jesus, splendor of the Father, have mercy on us. Jesus, brightness of eternal light, have mercy on us. Jesus, King of glory, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of justice, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of the Virgin Mary, have mercy on us. Jesus, most amiable, have mercy on us. Jesus, most admirable, have mercy on us. Jesus, the mighty God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Father of the world to come, have mercy on us. Jesus, angel of the great council, have mercy on us. Jesus, most powerful, have mercy on us. Jesus, most patient, have mercy on us. Jesus, most obedient, have mercy on us. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, have mercy on us. Jesus, lover of chastity, have mercy on us. Jesus, our lover, have mercy on us. Jesus, God of peace, have mercy on us. Jesus, author of life, have mercy on us. Jesus, model of virtues, have mercy on us. Jesus, zealous for souls, have mercy on us. Jesus, our God, have mercy on us. Jesus, our refuge, have mercy on us. Jesus, Father of the poor, have mercy on us. Jesus, treasure of the faithful, have mercy on us. Jesus, good shepherd, have mercy on us. Jesus, true light, have mercy on us. Jesus, eternal wisdom, have mercy on us. Jesus, infinite goodness, have mercy on us. Jesus, our way and our life, have mercy on us. Jesus, joy of the angels, have mercy on us. Jesus, King of the patriarchs, have mercy on us. Jesus, Master of the Apostles, have mercy on us. Jesus, Teacher of the Evangelists, have mercy on us. Jesus, Strength of Martyrs, have mercy on us. Jesus, Light of Confessors, have mercy on us. Jesus, purity of virgins, have mercy on us. Jesus, crown of all saints, have mercy on us. Be merciful, spare us, O Jesus. Be merciful, graciously hear us, O Jesus. From all evil, Jesus, deliver us. From all sin, Jesus, deliver us. From your wrath, Jesus, deliver us. From the snares of the devil, Jesus, deliver us. From the spirit of fornication, Jesus, deliver us. From everlasting death, Jesus, deliver us. From the neglect of your inspirations, Jesus, deliver us. Through the mystery of your holy incarnation, Jesus, deliver us. Through your nativity, Jesus, deliver us. Through your
your infancy, Jesus, deliver us. Through your most divine life, Jesus, deliver us. Through your labors, Jesus, deliver us. Through your agony and passion, Jesus, deliver us. Through your cross and dereliction, Jesus, deliver us. Through your sufferings, Jesus, deliver us. Through your death and burial, Jesus, deliver us. Through your resurrection, Jesus, deliver us. Through your ascension, Jesus, deliver us. Through your institution of the most holy Eucharist, Jesus, deliver us. Through your joys, Jesus, deliver us. Through your glory, Jesus, deliver us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, hear us. Jesus, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have said, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open to you. Mercifully attend to our supplications and grant us the grace of your most divine love, that we may love you with all our hearts and in all our words and actions, and never cease to praise you. Make us, O Lord, to have a perpetual fear and love of your holy name, for you never fail to govern those whom you establish in your love. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hello, family. In his autobiography, Before the Dawn, Rabbi Israel Zoli relates his conversion to the Catholic faith. When he was 12 years old, he visited the home of his Catholic friend, where he noticed on one of the walls a plain wooden crucifix. He wrote, it seemed that in that white room and in the presence of the crucifix, one could not help being serene, gentle, and good. Sometimes, I did not know why, I would raise my eyes to that crucifix and gaze for a long time at the figure hanging there. Let us gaze for a long time upon the crucified one as we journey with him through Holy Week. Something within us will change too, as it did for Rabbi Zoli, who eventually became the chief rabbi of Rome. Although it cost him a great deal to follow Christ, the crucified one called him to something much greater than the crosses he would endure. Can you see Jesus hanging upon the cross, looking upon you, only you? Do you see his loving glance that says, see how much I love you? Love is repaid by love alone. He wants your heart. May God bless us and transform our hearts. 
To learn about the week that changed the world and sign up for the free ebook, The Scriptural Rosary with Sorrowful Mysteries, please visit EWTN.com slash Holy Week. Live true. Live Catholic. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for the homeless. Lord Jesus, we praise you who have taught us how to live and how to love. You promised to welcome into your eternal joy those who fed you, clothed you, visited you, and welcomed you in the least of your brothers. Help the homeless to find employment and decent housing and console them in their need. Inspire government leaders and the faithful with ways to truly help the homeless to make their way and to meet their own basic needs. Stir up a new charity and wisdom in the hearts of all. Through Christ our Lord. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. To do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion that we may merit to receive your pardon. 
Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Be to God. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my refuge. In my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth, from my mother's womb, you are my strength. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. Dominus vobiscum. Et Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioannem. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. 
After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he, why he said this to them. Some thought that, Ju- that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, buy what we need for the feast or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. Febum Domini. During Holy Week, the readings at Mass beautifully juxtapose the prophecies of the suffering servant in the book of Isaiah with events in the Gospel accounts leading up to the passion and death of Jesus. On Good Friday, we will recall the details of our Lord's suffering and crucifixion as he accomplishes on the cross the work of the redemption of humanity. And although Jesus undergoes his most intense suffering on Good Friday, his suffering begins well before his actual crucifixion. His sharing in the Passover meal with his disciples is a bittersweet moment for him. On the one hand, he has greatly desired to share this Passover with them before he suffers. On the other hand, he is already grieving over the choices that his closest disciples are about to make. In today's gospel reading, the the betrayal of Judas and the denial of Peter are both foretold. And while there are similarities between both the actions of Judas and Peter, their final outcomes could not be more dissimilar. As Jesus and his disciples are reclining at table, he reveals the shocking news that one of those dining among them will be the one who betrays the Lord. In the Gospel of John, Jesus had only alluded to his death, but had not explicitly stated how his death would come about at the hands of his enemies, or who would hand him over to his enemies. And since the disciples were very close to one another, they had traveled through the towns of Galilee and Judea, and had seen many wonderful signs together it would have been inconceivable for one of them to be a traitor. The disciples were indeed shocked and surprised to hear about this. And Jesus himself was deeply troubled as he reveals this to him. Even though it might be necessary for Jesus to be handed over to be crucified for the sake of our salvation, the thought of one of his own closest friends turning on him the one who receives the morsel from Jesus' own hand is already a great cause of pain and sorrow. Jesus loves Judas just as much as he does his other disciples. He does not want to see Judas lost, but that he be saved from his sin. And even after handing Jesus over to the authorities to be crucified, Judas was not beyond forgiveness. He could have gone to the Lord and asked for mercy, and it would have been granted to him. But sadly, our Lord knows what will happen with Judas, how his remorse over what he has done 
will eventually lead to Judas ending his own life. He chooses to give in to despair rather than avail himself of Jesus' mercy and be forgiven. And then after Judas leaves, the, the ever impetuous Simon Peter says without thinking that he will lay down his life for Jesus. And Peter probably means well, but Jesus knows a person's heart. He tells Peter, on the contrary, that he will deny Jesus three times that very evening. And this is once again another cause of suffering for our Lord. The thought that the one who is the first to confess Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and is entrusted with the keys of the kingdom of heaven, will also be the one who denies him three times. Jesus' foreknowledge of these acts of denial and betrayal from his disciples does not lessen the pain and the anguish of these offenses. After all, it is often the case that the ones who are closest to us are the ones who hurt us the most. And both Judas and Peter have done something that is gravely offensive to our Lord in betraying him and denying him before others. Yet the mercy of Jesus knows no bounds. Both Judas and Peter can take the opportunity to turn back to the Lord and seek his forgiveness. Unfortunately, only Peter returns to the Lord, whereas Judas is overtaken by remorse. Judas and Peter thus represent the two ways that are placed before each one of us as sinners. While it is indeed true that our sins are an offense against the Lord, this does not mean that we are beyond his power to forgive. Some of us may have committed graver sins than others. We can either imitate Judas and choose to give in to despair and hopelessness, or we can choose to act like Peter and to make a renewed act of faith and hope in the Lord and in his great mercy. One way leads to death, and the other way leads to salvation and eternal life. So considering this, it seems like quite a bargain to make that act of trust in the Lord and to believe in the depths of his love for us. And the Catechism beautifully teaches how the very hour that sin manifests its full depravity paradoxically becomes the source of our forgiveness, that is, the sacrifice of Christ, of Christ himself. And in paragraph 1851, the Catechism says, it is precisely in the passion when the mercy of Christ is about to vanquish it that sin most clearly manifests its violence in its many forms. Unbelief, murderous hatred, shunning and mockery by the leaders and the people, Pilate's cowardice and the cruelty of the soldiers, Judas's betrayal, so bitter to Jesus, Peter's denial and the disciples' flight. However, at the very hour of darkness, the hour of the prince of this world, the sacrifice of Christ secretly becomes the source from which the forgiveness of our sins will pour forth inexhaustibly. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans, where sin abounds, grace abounded all the more. And perhaps there are some who are present here at the network or joining us by radio, television, or internet who are still holding on to a sin or sins that they have committed, thinking that it is still beyond God's mercy and forgiveness. Maybe there are some listening who know someone who is struggling to forgive themselves or accept the fact that God wishes to forgive them and to restore them to grace. Hopefully we can all take comfort in knowing that there is no sin, however great or small, that is beyond our Lord's ability or his willingness to forgive. He has not only forgiven Peter, who denied knowing him, and was even willing to forgive Judas, the one who betrayed him, but he also forgave the very ones who crucified him. There is no sin that is beyond our Lord's forgiveness. 
And he invites all of us today to bring to him our sins and to express our profound sorrow for them. While it is true that our sins have offended him, he does not wish to hold them against us. You know, our Lord's not vindictive. And thus, the source of our separation from God, our sin, has been transformed by his redemptive death into the means of our salvation. Our Lord wills that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. He then invites us to become heralds of his mercy throughout the world by proclaiming his love and mercy through our own actions, our words, and our intentions. It is through the power of Christ's merciful love that the wounds caused by sin can be healed and relationships between God and neighbor can be restored. And so may we forgive others and forgive ourselves and allow the Lord's healing grace to work powerfully through us for the sake of the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Father who gave us his Son to die upon the cross for our redemption. For our Holy Father, that the Lord may guide and lead him in his care for all the people of God. We pray to the Lord. For all priests, deacons, and religious, that they may be filled with the joy of God's continual presence in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. For all who strive to uphold civil peace, that they may be guided by God's wisdom, we pray to the Lord that artists, authors, and performers may use their talents to speak out for the unborn and for all who suffer injustice. We pray to the Lord for the faithful departed, that through God's mercy they may rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray especially for an end to the uh, fighting and the hostilities between the Ukraine and Russia and between uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis. And we pray for peace in those regions and that the aid uh, may get to uh, the, the Palestinians that, who need it uh, and also for the release of uh, any hostages. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> o oh God, you have planted your church beside the stream of living water flowing from the side of Christ crucified. Pour out upon us the spirit of your wisdom so that we may choose to die to self in order to live in Christ. Thus make us grow through our Lenten observance so that we may bear abundant fruit at Easter. Through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise of the Lord is name, for our good and the Lord Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalt and praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unble blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, 
Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us to the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who are those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through me, continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, 
bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divin institutione formati, audemus dicere. Patemus terpies in celis, sancti dicet ur nomen tuum, adveni ad reguntum, fiat voluntas tua, si ur in celo. Quesimus Domine ob omnibus malis, da propitius patrum in diebus nostris, Europe misericordiae tue adiuti, era peccato simus semper liberi, era omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, era ventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Jesu Christe, cur existi apostolis tuis, pacem eleco vobis, pacem eando vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tue, eam quese cuno voluntatem tuam pacificare equadunare dinieris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobis cu, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, and only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. O my Jesus, I believe that thou art truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire to possess thee within my soul. Since I am now unable to receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace thee as being already there, and unite myself wholly to thee. Never, never permit me to be separated from thee. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May your mercy, O Lord, O God, cleanse the people that are subject to you from all seduction of former ways and make them capable of new holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.
location. God our Father, who will set all men be saved and come to the knowledge of your truth, we beg of you to send laborers into your harvests and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness, so that your word may spread and be glorified, and all nations may know you, the only God, and him whom you have sent. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Americas, Mary, Mother of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, 